Hi, Mr. Sapone here, and today we're going to look at a few methods of resolving vectors. And we're going to look at the tail tip method, the parallelogram method, and a graphical method to where you draw and measure angles to scale using a ruler and a protractor. All three methods are relatively simple. Um, our money maker is going to be the tail to tip method, so we're going to start with that one first. And basically, it's about vector addition. I want to determine the resultant of the two component vectors below. So you can imagine this is a box, and somebody's either pushing or pulling a box 50 new with 50 newtons of force to the right, and somebody's pushing that box with 50 newtons of force to the north or upward, and this could be east or to the right, however you want to describe it. So there's a box and it's simultaneously uh, being pushed in two different directions. So what is the net result? What is this vector plus this vector going to add up to? And a tail to tip method is relatively simple. You start with either of the vectors, any of the vectors you want. We could have started with the other one if we wanted to. You just basically draw it in and then you simply are going to attach this other vector directly to it. And it's called tail to tip for a reason because we're going to take the tail of this vector and attach it to the tip of this vector right there. And that's really all you got to do. This actually would work if we had 20 vectors down here. We could actually keep doing it. Um, and once that's done, in order to get the resultant, you simply connect the tail of the first vector to the tip of the final vector. And if there were 10 vectors in here, it would still be the same thing, the tip of the first vector to the tail of the final one. So this is our resultant vector. And that's a really simple process. Um, we are very fortunate in this case that this motion is uh, in the x direction completely, and this is in the y. So we have a perfect right triangle here. Uh, we won't always have that, but to start off with, when we are actually putting in numbers, we will do that. And this is uh, the tail to tip method. Not super complicated. You simply just start with any vector and attach the tail of the other vector to it. And you kind of connect them at the end to get your result in. So the idea is if this was a box, the net direction of force would be off in this direction. And the resultant is really a simplification or a combination of the other two vectors. It gives us the magnitude and direction of the net force or the net speed or velocity or whatever unit or vector quantity you are working with at the time. And the cool thing is you notice this is the right triangle. And I know how much you love uh, trigonometry right now in physics. It's probably your favorite thing in the whole world, but you could actually do some trig. Uh, you could figure out this side right here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or you could use tangent, right? Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Inverse tangent would give you this angle theta right here. And of course you can figure out the resultant. Uh, once you get this angle, there's a number of methods you can use besides the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the resultant. So, and you end up with 71 newtons. And hopefully you realize that um, this is, well, these sides are equal. Since these sides are equal, these angles must be equal. This is 90 and it's got to add up to 180. So that one was sort of a gimme, but the resultant, you could have used Pythagorean theorem or any number of the Sokotoa trig functions once you have the angles in. So, um, And one more example of the tail of tip method. You simply start with any component vector. We started with that one, we could have started with the other. And you place the tail of the other vector at the tip of it, and now you're going to draw in your resultant. You're going to connect the two vectors and you are simply done. Now you would normally have to do some calculations but this is not a right triangle so more information would be very helpful for us in this case to actually put some angles and numbers in here. Um, normally in class you would be given this might be an angle we might say this is 15 degrees and maybe this is I don't know 80 looks about 80 75 degrees ish with respect to the vertical so normally you'd be given a little more information and you'd be able to solve a problem like this. But as this is right here, don't worry about solving something like this. We're not going to do anything of that nature. You need some more information. Uh, the next method is called the parallelogram method. It's a simple one. Um, it's commonly used in physics texts and by teachers. Uh, I think that will probably stick to the tail of the tip more often in class. But this uh, it's another way you could do it if you wanted to. 
And you simply take the tail of both vectors and they originate at the same point. So all you do is basically take this vector, put it here, and this originates at the same point. And you draw in a parallelogram. You just draw in dashed lines to where they connect. And your resultant is actually just going to go from here to here. So whereas when we went to tail the tip, we went like that, like that. And the resultant went, and I'm going to scribble it in, the resultant was this one. And we're going to get the same thing here. The resultant is up there. And, of course, we can do some uh, trigonometry, some geometry. This side's 50. We know this side's 50. This is 50, 50. Um, actually, since all the sides are going to be equal, these, all of these are going to be 90-degree angles. These should all be 45-degree angles. So, uh, generally, that's another method of vector resolution. And we can do the same thing if we were doing a parallelogram method here. You're going to take both of these vectors and you're going to start them from the same point. So they both start there and you're simply just going to draw in a line. Basically a parallelogram. This line here has to be parallel with this line. They can never cross. And this line has to be parallel with this line. And I can't draw it nearly as neat as I do it on a computer, so we will erase that. And you end up with your resultant vector. So that's another method of determining a resultant using the parallelogram method. Again, my preference is tail to tip. Uh, this looks really complicated, but it's not. All it's saying is that in a parallelogram, all these angles must add up to 360 degrees. It's rectangular. Um, and this side is equal in length to this side. You can tell that just by looking at it. And this side is equal in length to this side. And this angle ah, equals this angle and this angle equals this angle so it's kind of you can look at this it's common sense really if you've taken a little bit of geometry which if you're taking physics you should have taken geometry uh so these opposite angles and opposite sides are equal to one another and of course when using a parallelogram method sometimes we got to use law of cosines and things of that nature to figure out the resultant but we're going to stick to the tail to tip method uh, and we're going to end up with a lot of right triangles which will make our job much more are much easier. Uh, the last way is a graphical method of vector resolution and what that simply means is you can draw these vectors to scale on graph paper and these are actually drawn to scale using pixels on PowerPoint but if you decided to set up a scale whereby two meters per second is equal to two inches and then of course uh, basically our scale here is one meter per second is one inch. So then you would draw 4 meters per second as 4 inches, and you can use tail to tip or parallelogram, and you basically have a resultant here. You can measure the distance of it with a ruler. And if that ruler turns out to be 4.5 inches long, uh, shows this is 4.5 inches, then you know it's 4.5 meters per second. And of course, you can use a protractor to measure this angle. So in some cases, we can use a graphical method. We can just measure things and draw things to scale instead of actually using trigonometry. In this case, if you knew this and this, a squared plus b squared is c squared, or you can use inverse tangent, opposite over adjacent to get this angle. A lot of times trig would be more helpful, but if we think about it, um, if we wanted to graphically, we could have solved an earlier problem. I'm just gonna scroll back a few slides. We had a problem that we really couldn't solve because we didn't have enough information. Uh, this one right here, but uh, if we drew a scale up, if we made this 2.5 inches, and we made this two inches we could actually measure this length in inches and you can get a the magnitude of this and you could actually get a protractor and measure these angles so whereby solving this using tail the tip or trigonometry would be basically more or less in, uh, very very hard if not impossible we only know two sides of a triangle and we don't know any of these angles you could try to make right triangles and do things but um generally you could solve this using a scale drawing, but we're not going to solve this in any other method. So we went through three methods of uh, vector resolution. As noted, our money maker is going to be the tail to tip method, whereby you take one vector and connect the tail of the other vector to the tip of it, and your resultant goes from tail to tip. So this will be our best, our best method of adding and subtracting vectors. 
We're going to use that and it helps us create a right triangle in a lot of cases when our vector is in the x direction and y direction. And sometimes when we have a vector that's not in the x or the y direction, we're going to break it in the components and get it that way so it's easier to work with. And we'll see how to do that in a later screencast. So those are your three methods. I'll focus on the tail tip and probably the best way to do these, just do a couple of practice problems. We'll have some assignments with them um, and it'll become easier and easier. By the end of the year, you will be super vector experts. I guarantee it. Uh, Mrs. Zappone.